Hey, happy Halloween, even though Halloween isn't really a thing in Australia, but that's okay because it's always been an event that I've always been sort of interested in. And because, well, it's fitting as well that I might as well review Halloween Kills because, you know, it just came out and everything. Well, not just, I know I'm a bit late to it. Everybody's kind of already said their piece by now. But, I don't know, even though I'm a small channel, I feel like some people might want to hear my thoughts about it because, you know, I talk about horror movies and stuff. So, yeah, I thought I should definitely talk about Halloween Kills and so... Here we are. Keep in mind, this is not going to be a spoiler review per se. I am going into this assuming that you, the watcher, have seen the film because I feel like the points I'm going to bring up are going to make a lot more sense in context. Though, you know, I'm not going to get into gory, gritty details about who lives and dies if you're being really cautious about spoilers and all that stuff. But anyway, let's talk Halloween Kills. Okay, so Halloween Kills, if you ask me, was kind of a huge step down from the 2018 version, i got to say. I was hugely looking forward to this. Like, like, I was, this was a really highly anticipated film for me, but um, yeah, I really didn't think it was as good as its predecessor, mainly due to a major lack in character focus. There was just not really one central protagonist to latch onto. Everybody was kind of swept to the side. That includes Laurie Strode and her daughter and granddaughter. That includes like every character that we would have liked from the previous film. All the new additions that they put in here are all kind of just shallow characters that don't really have that much of a personality. And because of that, you're not really really that worried for their safety so this isn't really a movie where you're like oh no my favorite character is about to get killed you're more just like oh it, look Michael Myers is gonna kill some dudes <laughs> like you're not really on the edge of your seat it's not really that intense because of that and because of that I gotta say that I think that that drew Michael Myers himself back a little bit because I wasn't that scared of what he was going to do you know I wasn't that worried for the beloved characters and everything and so that did kind of make his scenes a little less intense that being said, despite that, if I ignore the fact that I didn't really love the human characters, I gotta say that this depiction of Michael Myers might be my favourite. Between that and the original, like he was an absolute fucking monster in this movie and I did really appreciate that. And you know, being like the horror movie fan that I am, I like slashes, I like blood and gore and that kind of stuff and I gotta say that Halloween Kills definitely delivers on that end. And I was pretty impressed by all the effects and everything that they had on display here when it came to that stuff. Like, this is definitely a fun movie if you're looking for kills. It's just not that good a movie if you're looking for more than that. And that, that I gotta say, is why I was a bit disappointed by it. That being said, if you're not really that big a fan of the franchise, you might be fine just watching this and having a bit of fun watching this character kill a bunch of people. Because that's what the movie essentially is. And it's fun in that kind of schlocky way, but it's not as impressive as some of the higher end, better, you know, cinema of the Halloween franchise, if that makes any sense. Okay, so what I want to get into now though, is a more specific complaint, talking about the idiotic characters in this movie. That is another major complaint that I have for the characters. Not only are they shallow, but a lot of them are just complete dumbasses, to be honest. Um, so there's this one aspect to the film where they really are trying to push this message, which already feels a a little bit out of place when it comes to a Halloween film, this particular message, it really doesn't need to be there. But the message basically is don't lean into mob mentality. Don't just believe everything that you're being told and go against the grain and, you know, stick up for what you believe in and whatever. Because mob mentalities and that kind of thing and angry crowds, you know, can lead to dangerous situations and can also lead to spreading misinformation, which is exactly what happens in this film where the angry mob are going after Michael Myers, but they happen to go after after the wrong guy who just happens to be another escaped mental patient um, who is completely innocent and does not need to be killed by this crowd and they do a total fuck up. And basically the entire message of this whole thing, the whole point for this entire subplot is don't do that. <laughs> don't join an angry mob. No. Oh, I'll be your friend. No. A friend actually pointed out something that really opened my eyes when it came to this thing. So one major problem that I had with this metaphor, this analogy, was that it was so obvious as to what they were going for. It was very heavy handed. But Bruce Perky at the Find Your Film podcast pointed out to me that this metaphor also doesn't work because the mob isn't particularly wrong, not with their intentions anyway. Their wrongdoing is that they fucked up because they're dumbasses. They screwed up what they were trying to do by going after the wrong guy. But their original intentions are correct. Like, going after Michael Myers, if they had have taken him down, that's objectively a good thing for Haddonfield, you know? Like, he is objectively an evil bad guy killing people left, right, and center for no real reason. What makes 
makes this analogy work in other works of fiction, say Frankenstein, which Bruce Perky again is the one that came up with this example. He mentioned that Frankenstein works in this metaphor because he is a misunderstood character. He is not the villain of the story, but the angry mob thinks he's the villain of the story. That's where the metaphor works because it's a complete misunderstanding. Here, it's not a misunderstanding as to who Michael Myers is. It's just a misunderstanding as to who Michael Myers is. As in, he's the other guy. <laughs> but sure, if you want the metaphor in there, that's fine. I guess it works on a very shallow level, but I just didn't think it was really that necessary and it really bogged the film down in a movie that really didn't need it. I think if I had one word to describe Halloween Kills because of that metaphor and some of the other elements like the Little John and Big John thing, I think one word that I would have to describe Halloween Kills would be tacky. This was just kind of, I don't know, it was kind of embarrassing. It was like kind of silly, but still I had enough fun with it. Like, I did enjoy watching this film, but I don't think that it is a movie that is particularly going to work for really big fans of the franchise. Because a lot of this film isn't quite as prestigious as kind of films from the past. But I also don't think that this movie is particularly going to work for complete new fans who know nothing about Halloween either. Because a lot of Halloween Kills is just a bunch of callbacks and flashbacks telling us everything that has happened in the past, all that kind of stuff. Everything's kind of a reference to the original and the 2018 film as well. And and a large majority of this movie is also everybody, all of the characters, telling me, the audience, why Michael Myers is scary to begin with. Rather than, you know, showing, they kind of just keep telling you over and over and batting you over the head with it. Like the whole mob mentality message, it's another thing that feels so very obvious where they just keep smashing it in your face just telling you Michael Myers is a scary evil guy, okay? If you didn't know that, just listen to him say it for the 20th time if you want. Along with that, when they say evil dies tonight because damn, that don't play a drinking game when it comes to that in this film because they just, they really hammer that point home, okay? That's, that's all I'll say. Look, I don't know. I think this movie was quite a mixed bag to be honest, but again, I did have a fun time with it in terms of being just a fun slasher where it's Michael Myers killing a bunch of guys. I was impressed by the performance, the actual depiction of Michael Myers because he was just this legit beast who couldn't be stopped and I do appreciate that element to it. But yeah, I wasn't overly impressed. One thing I was pretty impressed by was that first um, original flashback scene set right after, I believe, the original Halloween film. So it's set in 1978 and it fucking looks like it. Like, I thought that that was pretty damn cool. Genuinely, I think you can enjoy this movie in like a corny kind of way, but I don't think it's particularly for big fans or new fans or anything. I think this is for, this is one for the casual fans like myself, because I myself am not that big a fan of the Halloween franchise, I gotta say. I'm a pretty casual fan. Like, I've seen them all. I like them enough and everything, but like, I'm not like crying out for it you know I don't need a film every year from the Halloween franchise what I want is a Nightmare on Elm Street film please give us more of those which you're never going to it's been 11 years it's been 11 years that's long enough but um yeah I think this is one for the casual fans I think it's a fun movie but I definitely just don't think it's quite as polished I think there's issues with the pacing and the writing they sweep all of the characters to the side and it just kind of sucks because of that just mainly the character focus is really what this film failed on if you ask me and and I really could have used a lot more when it came to characters. See, I feel like 2018's Halloween did a lot more with its runtime, which is like pretty much the same runtime as this film. It did a lot more plot-wise and everything, a lot more progressed than in this film, which just feels like a stand-in in between the 2018 one and next year's Halloween Kills. This is very much just a bridge between those films. And honestly, if I'm gonna be re-watching this particular franchise in a few years, I might just skip Halloween Kills altogether. It doesn't feel that necessary. Necessary. But it's fun enough as a Halloween film. And that's it. That's all I have to say. So if you disagree with me, let me know. Uh, <laughs> tell me what you think and all that stuff. Again, I did like it. I don't want to be all like, I fucking hated this. But I did have a lot of problems with it. Okay? Does that make any sense? Yes. Cool. Alright, so please do the things which is like, comment, share, subscribe, all that stuff. You know. And I'm gonna, yeah, head out. Happy Halloween and whatever. <laughs>